Welcome back to the Artifactors Union. I am your host and foreman, Douglas Scoundrels, and today we are assembling Old Hop, a versatile model for the Resurrectionist faction. A big, spiky robot boy that apparently likes butterflies. So, here's our artwork and our render on the back. Singular, big model. Let's look at the sprue. Sprue in my box came split. I don't think it actually fit as it is in there, but um, you can see that it was just cut in half. And thankfully none of the lettering on one half is going to bits on the other half, so that's good. So how are we going to build this? Um, it's going to be kind of awkward with two bits, Wait a sec. I lost my X-Acto knife, but I found it, finally. Okay, so order of assembly, we will start by doing the torso like we usually do. Um, this one is slightly more complicated than usual. We'll grab this A7 back piece. Then we'll stack A6 on top of it. And then on top of both of those, we'll stack A5, which is the front of the body. And then we'll go ahead and do like the body on top, as well as the additional spikes coming out of the body, which are on this sprue, I think, mostly. They're, they're, they're everywhere. Uh, once we got all the stuff on the top, we can do the head and face. Um, I'll point these out later. There's just a lot of stuff here. Then we can do each of the arms, finish with the, um, I, I, I guess, the abdomen, and then the legs. Thankfully, <laughs> Weird has well labeled their instructions, so this should be a lot. This should be a lot easier than uh, what it normally would be. So I'll just call out the bits. Possibly show them again to you as we assemble, but let's first grab A7 and then A6. Alright, we've got A7, the back part of the torso. But we're going to be looking at it from this angle. Next is going to be A6, which is going to cover up this bottom portion of the bit, but there will still be this gap up here. Okay, told you it looked kind of weird. Just check your seams. Looks good, so we're just going to add a 5 right on top of this portion, and it'll be a complete torso. Well, mostly complete anyways. Okay, our next four bits, we're going to grab a 4, and we're going to put it right on top of his torso. And then a 14 is going to be our first spike, and it's going to go, I think, right here. So it's going to sort of connect between this bit and the rest of the torso. And then spike a 15 will be going right through his... Uh, Tommy, the, the victim that's sitting on top of Old Hob, and then A16 will be going right through his thigh. Yes, okay, so let's start with A4. Okay, now that Old Hob has his hat, we can do the spikes. Um, you can see them right here, A14, A15, and A16. Yeah, I'm relatively certain A14 is the hardest of these. And that's because the connection point is round, so it can technically go in at an angle. So, I found that your reference point is going to be this notch right here, at the base of the spike. And that notch is going to fit right over his shoulder, uh, kind of like so. Now you got to press it in pretty hard. I was actually having a hard time figuring out how it was connected, because it wasn't going in as far as it should have. You just got to put a little muscle behind it, and at worst, maybe trim it down, but... Uh, yeah, that's that's what we're looking for. I'm going to glue that now. There it is glued. Now A15, the middle one. It'll effectively fit in perfectly two ways. Um, you want the spike pointing up as opposed to out, though. Now, A16 for our last spike. And that's the only way it'll fit snugly into place. But our spikes are done. Now let's work on the head. Okay, for our head, we are going to grab A3 the right side of the head, as well as A2, the left side of the head, and A1 is going to be our face. And I think we can probably combine all those before we put them on the model itself, okay? So let's grab A3 and then A2. A3, add A2, and A1. Okay, putting them on the neck. It's going to be a little fiddly. You see the three points where it's going to connect to the three points here, but then there's these extra tubes 
which are going to be slightly confusing, so I'll show you where they both go. We'll say this is tube 1, the one that's further out, and tube 2. Tube 1 is going to go all the way under here and connect right here, whereas tube 2 is just going to go right alongside the neck, I think right there. Yeah, you can see the connection point. Now, the last thing is that you're going to need to push down relatively hard to get them to go into the neck fully. And that's, once it's all the way inside, there'll be no gaps, as well as the tubes actually matching up to where they're supposed to go. Um, so, yeah, there he is. You can see no gaps, and the tubes go where they're supposed to. All right, now he can work on his arms. Okay, for our arms, we only have to deal with this side of the sprue, hooray. Our left arm is going to be A10 combined with A11. Then our right arm... Sorry, our right arm is going to be A12. If you can look at that, there we go. A12 and A13. Okay, let's start with the left arm. A10 is first... And we add A11 and make sure that the seam is... I believe that's actually supposed to be there. Yes, so those gaps are actually supposed to be there. You can look at the render and you'll see on his right arm that the gap is intentional, which is good because I panicked ever so slightly. So yes, uh, stupid camera. That's supposed to be there. You should try and fill this gap in as much as possible, though. So our left arm is going to slot right in there. Also, you can just barely see, but it's not completely spherical. There's a kind of a flat side right there. That will match up to the flat side on the bit right there. He's got claws. Yay. Okay. Let's work on the right arm. A12 and A13. And just like the other one, there is a flat side to the connection point right there, which will correspond to the flat side inside here, right on this side. Okay, we're all done with the upper body. Someone please mod him with just very large, long, hairy human legs. I think it would be funny. Anyways, let's work on the bottom half now. Combine A8 and A9 and connect that to the torso. A8 plus A9, but we're looking at the back side, so this is the front of the model. Let's attach him to uh, his spikiness. Right there, you can see. There is his teeny tiny waist. Now well, let's do the legs and we'll be done. So each of the legs are in three parts, and thankfully, um, they're in sets of three as far as numerical order. So A17 and we'll attach to a 18 and in between them will be a 19 this sort of skeletal piece and then subsequently our right leg um, will be a 20 opposite a 21 and the skeletal piece will be a 22. all right let's start on the left leg all right, here's A17. We're going to add A19 next. It's going to effectively be a center toe. Um, you can see the sort of wiry part of it. It's going to go right here, and actually the other part is going to sit outside underneath the thigh right here. And it was probably easier just to show it to you, but here's A19 and how it fits onto the model. Now do A18, the outside part of the leg. And here is the whole thing. A bit of a gap on the calf, I guess, that I couldn't really close, but I think that's just going to take some TLC shaving things down before you can really completely close that, but it's barely noticeable, so I'm not going to fight it too much. Um, yeah, let's just attach them to the uh, rest of the body now. We have two connection points. This one is where the sort of long part of the connection point is, and then there's also a ball that will go in right here. A long bit, and the ball. There is our leg attached. Let's look at the back real quick. All right, let's finish our right leg. A20, A22, and A21. It has the exact same connection points as the other leg, so the long piece will go in here, and the ball will go in here. Four, and after, check from the back, and the front. 
He's all done. Put him on a base. Old hub. All done. He's... He's very large. <laughs> and adorable! I mean, he's kind of cute. Like, if you read his fluff, he's got a thing for butterfly. Anyways. Um, thankfully, the instructions were helpful with the numbering. Otherwise, this would have taken me a lo longer time to do. Hardest part was the, um... The first spike figuring out how that went in and that I actually had to push it in pretty hard was uh, was the hardest part, followed by the pipes that are attached to the head. Um, but that was just uncertainty on my part. And yet again, that was another thing that was caused by me not pushing the bit in far enough. But I told you what those problems were, so you should have a fine time as long as you don't accidentally stab yourself. But I have been your foreman, Douglas Scoundrels, helping you build a better Malifaux.